I recently made a video about a new study that revealed the truth about why you procrastinate. And funnily enough, it's not to do with time management, despite what most people, including the University of Manchester and Rochester think. And as I was researching that video, I came across another new study that reveals another aspect about why you procrastinate that most people just aren't talking about. It all comes down to this viral tweet and revenge bedtime procrastination. But before I get into that, I want to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. It's been over a year since I did a sponsored video. I really value your trust, but Audible is something I use enough to recommend to you. And the way I view audiobooks is this. There are people out there that spend years of their life researching and making mistakes, and they boil the year's worth of research down into an audiobook that you can consume in just a few hours. And you can do that whilst on a commute, whilst doing the dishes, whilst doing literally everything, all of that knowledge in just a few hours. So I recommend all of you to consider getting an Audible subscription and definitely get the free trial where you can get a free audiobook. There's a link in the description or go to audible.com slash Andrew Kirby or text Andrew Kirby to 500 500 right now. Let's get back to this tweet which recently went viral. It explains the phenomenon where you have no control throughout your day, so you regain your freedom in the very late hours of the evening. And I experienced this firsthand in the last few years of formal education. I had no control over my routine. Very strict, I had to get up at a certain time, I had to get on the bus at a certain time, I had to go to lessons, have a lunch break, go back to lessons, and then I could come home, at which my evening was planned with homework and chores and all of that other stuff. I had no freedom about how I could spend my time. And even the weekends where I wanted to do these incredible things, I wanted to be productive, I wanted to read books, I wanted to start reaching my potential, I couldn't control myself. I didn't have the discipline, the self-control, and I procrastinated on doing all of these things. So during the week, I had no control over my schedule, and on the weekend, I had no control over myself. And because of this complete lack of control in all of my daytime hours, I would stay up later and later and later to try and regain just some kind of freedom. And when most people are struggling to sleep, they go out and buy an eye mask. Maybe the reason I'm struggling to sleep is because of light. Well, they go out and they play white noise. Maybe the reason I'm struggling to sleep is because of the noise that's coming in from the street. Or maybe they go out and buy light blocking glasses. It's the blue light that's secreted from your phone and from all of these different things. It emulates the sun. We all know this, these light blocking glasses, these might help us. But oftentimes these things are simply plasters and they don't address the root cause of the problem. The root cause being a lack of control over your routine and of yourself. Now these problems have been put on steroids given the current state of affairs, where we have to do certain things by certain times and even more of our freedom is taken away from us. So when I was reading the scientific papers about procrastination, it really shocked me when I realized that this problem is actually far worse than it seems. The researchers asked 71 adults to keep a log of their daily activities. And these adults were across all spectrums from construction to finance to teachers to medicine. And each day they were shown statements like this. Today I promised myself I would do something and then I dragged my feet. And then they asked the participants, how much do you agree with this statement? When all of the data was collected, the researchers found that there was a correlation between a poor night's sleep and procrastination the next day. And that individuals who naturally struggle with self-control would procrastinate an insane amount the day after a bad sleep. And this is how we create the procrastination flywheel. You procrastinate during the day, which leads to you feeling like you have less control over yourself. And to try and regain your freedom, you stay up late until the night, which impacts your sleep quality, which we've just discovered causes you to procrastinate more the next day. We end up in this vicious cycle where our sleep is impacted. Our procrastination keeps getting worse and worse. We can't do the things we say we're gonna do. We promise ourselves tomorrow's gonna be different and it's not and we procrastinate every day. 
And then you just think of the second order consequences of this, the knock-on effects of this. We know that poor sleep makes us look older, it puts us in a worse mood, it increases our likelihood of so many health consequences. We all know this. Let's now talk about why we engage in revenge bedtime procrastination, and then we'll discuss how you can stop this cycle. Now, the reason why is not as simple as it seems. There are four main reasons that we revenge bedtime procrastinate. First, some people have a fear of dawn. For some people, they're not procrastinating on getting to sleep, they're procrastinating on tomorrow because they know as soon as they sleep, tomorrow will come, and when tomorrow comes, they'll be filled with the same day that they don't want to face. Second, overstimulation. Thanks to dopamine law, it's possible to go about our day to day without having a single second unstimulated. We can be listening to music, we can be watching something at every second of the day, apart from sleep. Why would you want to sleep when you can simply watch Netflix? So some people are doing this because sleep is just too boring. Third of all, fear of thoughts. Because of dopamine law and this massive stimulation, it's possible to go about your day rarely thinking anything, rarely being alone with your thoughts. But when it comes to sleeping, you have to be left alone with your thoughts and some people are incredibly afraid of this. So they procrastinate by continually watching YouTube or Netflix so that they're never left alone with their thoughts. And finally, for some people, it's actually a weird kind of self-harm. I call it revenge insomnia. If you're not proud of what you've done throughout the day, you're not proud of the person you're becoming, for some people, they punish themselves in the evening by staying up late. Sigmund Freud defined this compensation as a defense mechanism. Where you're not proud of one area of your life, you indulge in another area of your life by staying up and watching Netflix. So we know that this is a problem. It was a problem that affected my life for a very long period of time. It would get to the point I was sleeping throughout the day and awake throughout the night, and there was almost times where my sleep schedule had fully flipped, where I'd got later and later every day and I'd actually miss a full day because of this sleep habit. And the solution to this problem is to break the flywheel. And we can do that in two different areas. The first area is we can focus directly on sleep. Now I'm not an expert in sleep, but if you want to do it like this, I'd recommend you picking up the audible book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Click the link in the description. You can listen to that for free. The second way is you can simply fix your procrastination. Now I know that that's easier said than done. This is literally what time theory was built for. And I know it's a very difficult problem, but as I was researching for that study, there's another new study that suggests it has the solution to solving this problem. This study reduced revenge bedtime procrastination in 601 undergraduate students by using a technique called MCII. Now MCII is actually a combination of two different techniques. The first one being mental contrasting, which makes up the MC. To do mental contrasting, there are three different steps. First, you write down a feasible wish. Second, you write down the positive outcome of that wish. And third, you write down the obstacles to that wish, things that may stop you from getting to that wish. In this specific example, we have getting to bed on time. We have feeling well rested and not procrastinating the next day. And the obstacle to that may be an urge to watch Netflix. Once you've written that down, you can move on to the second technique, which is called implementation intentions, which is the II section of MCII. Implementation intentions is basically creating if then statements for your life. If it is 10 p.m., I'll put my phone away, I'll get myself into bed, and I'll try and get to sleep. And the reason that this is effective is oftentimes we're incredibly vague with what we want. I want to get to bed earlier. I want to go to bed on time. I want to sleep better. I want to stop procrastinating. But this technique really increases specificity and specificity reduces procrastination. And I would give you my own recommendations for things that you can do that's gonna allow you to stop procrastinating and really use your time wisely. But I know some of you guys just want techniques that are backed up by science, which is fair enough. So we'll leave the other techniques for another day. You see, it's very easy when you get into personal development and productivity and time management, which are all great, to start viewing sleep as a distraction. It's a necessary evil. It's something you've got to do to do what you really want to do. 
Instead, reframe sleep as the foundation to your life. Sleep impacts literally every single area of your life, from your looks to your mental well-being. It all is impacted by sleep. Sleep is the foundation and you don't want to build your castle on a foundation of sand. Trust me, it is far easier to beat procrastination with a good night's sleep. And in the link in the description, there's a worksheet that's gonna walk you through the MCII technique so that you can start using it. If you've made it to the end of the video, then subscribe and like this video to give the YouTube algorithm data so that it's gonna show you more videos just like this one so you can continue to improve your life. Appreciate you for sticking to the end. I'll see you in the next video.